sickness, redeem from death, redeem from sin. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it's your season to win. Take your healing, take your freedom, take your favor. Give the Lord a shot. thank you lord lift your hands up let's pray together father we rejoice and we thank you for the privilege of coming before your holy written word and we thank you that the holy spirit lives on our inside to guide us into all the truth and i ask that everybody connected to this service revelation knowledge is gifted them but in saint yukes are destroyed and whatever is not planted by god is rooted out thank you lord that your word comes with clarity today your word builds up and equips your people and we rejoice that by the end of this service we all be the better for it thank you father for confirming your word with signs wonders and miracles in jesus precious name and every believer says it powerful amen praise god forevermore lift your right hands to heaven let's release our feet together as we say these words i am born of god i am born of the world the word of god is my nature I do not struggle to do the world. I do the world naturally. Therefore, today, I will understand the word of God. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, and every believer says a powerful amen. We well, want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Oh, what a joy to have all of you on the social media community connected to the service this morning. And we want to welcome all of the Aquaibom State community connected right now by way of Comfort FM, XL FM Radio, Aquaibom, You Know You FM, Inspiration FM, Heritage FM. So glad to welcome all of you to the service today. Hey guys, do me a favor, call a friend and ask them to tune to the this radio station right now life is flowing through the airwaves our social media community like you've always done do it again let's do it together again today and get the fragrance of jesus's grace to the rest of the world help me share the video on your page share with all the groups on your page and of course create watch parties tag some people to connect to the service and then of course help us share the video on monogram telegram and whatsapp groups let's flood the entire blue marble planet with the fragrance of jesus's grace all our campuses around the world we're so glad to welcome every one of you and today is easter well many people do not want us to talk about easter but you know it's not about the easter itself but it's about the fact that today the whole world acknowledges and recognizes that there was a day when salvation and the free favors of god profusely abounded to mankind and of course, for whatever it is, today is the day where all churches in the world preach the message of his death, burial, and resurrection. So hey, it's exciting to be alive and to see what God is doing in our times. All right? Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self this morning as we get into the word of God. In the first service this morning, we continued our teaching on the miraculous and we began to examine how does God do miracles. And we began to see a number of things and I will touch on a few and then shoot into, you know, the things that God will have us teach in this service. We began to say sometimes we think miracles are like magic. And I took time to show the difference between magic and miracles. 
in magic is about showmanship it's one man doing his stuff and making things happen for people to be baffled and surprised but when it comes to miracles miracles are done by the power of god and the participation of a man look at the book of luke chapter 1 verse number 30 luke chapter 1 verse 30 let's look at the incarnation of christ which is the miracle that was as great before the resurrection of jesus and the angel said unto her fear not mary for thou hast found favor with god next verse and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name jesus next verse he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the lord god shall give unto him the throne of his father david 33 he shall reign over the house of jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end 34 then said mary unto the angel how shall this be seeing i know not a man now this is what the angel didn't say the angel didn't say hello mary you are pregnant mm -mm. he said to mary this is a prophecy you shall conceive and you shall bring forth his son and he shall be called the son of the highest and of course you know mary said to the angel how shall these things be seeing i know not a man and the angel turned to her and said, The power of the Most High shall come upon you, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow you, and that holy thing that is in you shall be born of you. It shall be born of you. Which means Mary's participation was required in the greatest miracle of the incarnation of Christ. Look at that verse 34 of Luke chapter 1 again. Luke chapter 1 verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. Meaning it is not magic. And remember, this is the greatest miracle before the resurrection. Yet, human's participation was required. You know, most people come before God. They come to services. They come to the church. And they expect that a miracle is just going to fall on their legs. They don't have to be involved. They just think that the power of God will just come on them and make things happen. God does not operate like that. God is not magical. A miracle is not magic. A miracle is the intervention of God in the natural course of affairs. Of course, with the participation of a man to believe and act on God's word. That's why it's not magic. Magic is one man doing his own thing and getting everybody surprised. You know, like the guy I told you who took, uh, who took a matchbox and turned it into fire. And then turned it back into a matchbox, empty matchbox. I mean, that's, that's magic. That's not a miracle in the miracle working operation of god a man's participation is required now listen to me everybody wherever you are this morning let me begin by prophesying over you today you are a candidate for a miracle i say you are a candidate for a miracle now lift your right hand and say with me i believe in miracles say it again i believe in miracles amen god wants you to have miracles whenever natural circumstances fail to produce the desired result now please follow this mary said how can these things be seen i know not a man and the angel said the power of the highest shall come upon you look at verse 35 of luke chapter 1 luke chapter 1 verse 35 and the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of you you are the one that will give birth to you. that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god next verse and behold thy cousin elizabeth she had also conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren 37 for with god nothing shall be impossible the word all things or all things are possible it means no word of god is void of ability it was yet to happen but the word of god does not lack the ability to bring it to pass in other words god is saying before he does anything he speaks 
which means God's speakings precedes God's doings. When God starts speaking, get ready. God is about to do. That's why everywhere you see miracles, things were said before miracles happened. Things were said before miracles happened. No word of God is void of ability. That's what he meant. That is, nothing God has said that will not come to pass. So, God speaks first. Then he acts. He does not act, then speaks. No, he speaks before acting. And the angel said to her, Mary, no word of God shall lack ability. Then look at what Mary responded in verse 38 of Luke chapter 1. Glory to God. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me, glory to God, according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Can everybody lift your right hand and say to me very loud. Be it unto me according to thy word. Say with me, I receive the miracle word of God. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. Glory to God. No word of God shall be void of power. Now please pay attention. That's the difference between a miracle and magic. Every time God heals, he heals with human participation. Healing from God requires your participation. Now, when it has to do with provisions, material provisions, a third party is required. Because God will use people to get things to you. Remember, the car you need is not in heaven. The house you need is not in heaven. Even the money you need is in the hands of people. All right? Uh, all the connections you need are in the hands of men. The businesses, opportunities, they are all in the hands of men. So when God is miraculously meeting your need, he uses men to meet your need. And if those men refuse to yield for God to use them, then there is a delay. But remember, the delay is not a denial. It's just a delay because God is working on people's hearts. Because listen, God is not a tyrant. He doesn't force anybody. When God wants to use people, he will walk, walk through them, walk with them, convince them, make them see, and make them willing to do it. Then through them, God carries out his operation to meet the needs of men. Okay, so that's the way God does with provisions. But with healing, he only requires the participation of the person that is in need of that healing. Now, so when Solomon says, when a man's ways pleases God, he will make his enemies to be at peace with him. It's not an absolute statement. God will do what he will do and men can choose to like you or dislike you. Have you ever seen some people... You just look at them, you don't feel a likeness towards them. And it's not because you hate them, you just don't like them. And there are some people, no matter what they do, you just like them. It's the way human beings are, you know. <laughs> it's the way human beings function, alright? Now, so do not feel uncomfortable when men suddenly change in their disposition towards you. It's not because you did something wrong. It's just within one's purview and the man will do what he wants to do. And you know, some people sometimes, when you find out that it's like people are not favoring you, you start thinking maybe it's witches or wizards or demons from the village. And that's why you keep praying and praying and nothing ever changes because people don't like you not because you're bad. People just don't like you because that's the way human beings are sometimes. Sometimes they like you, sometimes people just change their mind. What about Jesus? The Bible says he grew in wisdom and in favor with God and man. So Jesus had favor with man, but not all the time. There was also a time people rejected Jesus and said they prefer a thief in the place of Jesus. Did he do anything wrong? He did nothing wrong. It's just the way human beings function. And you must get used to it to understand. And that's why you don't put your trust in men. You put your trust in God. He said, charge them that are rich in this world not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us all things richly to enjoy. So you trust God 
and as you trust God, you speak words of faith and let God's power go into operation and let God be the one to decide who he wants to use to meet your need. You don't put your eyes on men, you put your eyes on God. Even when men promise you to do things for you, just thank them but let your heart be on the Lord because they could fail. But God never fails. So if you trust God, God will use people and he may not use the same people next time. That's why you trust him, not the people. But you know, some people are very funny. When God uses somebody to bless you, then you take your eyes from God and put on the person, then he fails you. Because that's the way it works. But if your eyes remain on the Lord and you keep trusting the Lord, God will choose who he wants to use in what circumstance to meet your need and to move you to the things that he will have you do per time. It's so important you take note of that. Now, please pay attention. So like we said, Jesus was accepted, then he was rejected. There are different kinds of men. In Luke chapter 6 verse 38, Jesus says that men give in return to what you have done. Men usually respond to kindness. Give, it shall be given. Good measure, praise down, shaking together. Running over shall men give to your bosom. But Jesus said, don't do that. Give to those who are unkind to you. You are like your heavenly father. Look at Jesus' teaching. He always taught against injustice in the distribution of wealth. That's why there are different kinds of men. There are men that will obey and there are men that will disobey. In fact, even among believers, you have those who are carnal in their actions. And then, of course, you have believers who are spiritual. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 2. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now, please pay attention. The truth is, you need to realize that miracles are not magic. Miracles are always involving two things. Number one, God's persuasion. Number two, man's response. God's persuasion, then man's response. And when it comes to healing, oftentimes, just two people, you and God. When it comes to material things, you God and those that God has chosen to use. You need to see it like that. Don't think it's magic because it is never magic. Look at Luke chapter 19, verse 5 and 6, Zacchaeus. Luke chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. 7 and 8. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So men give. Nobody begs Zacchaeus. You know, Zacchaeus experienced the kindness of Jesus and decided in return to be kind to other people by distributing his wealth. Now, and that is how charity and wealth goes around the world. People get money and they distribute it through different means. There are non-Christians that are not born again, but they are very kind. It doesn't mean that they are born again. And of course, Jesus didn't condemn, you know, even Zacchaeus. In Luke chapter 14, a woman came and poured her ointment on Jesus and it was received. What about Cornelius? Cornelius gave much alms. And uh, the Bible tells us he wasn't saved. And God told him, your much arms and your prayers have come up before me for a memorial. So men have a part to play in certain things that God does to us. Yes, men can respond and men can refuse to respond. There's a man in Acts chapter 5, for example, who intervened in the persecution of the apostles. His name was Gamaliel. Look at it. 
Acts chapter 5 verse 34 to 36. Acts chapter 5 verse 34 to 36. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law and in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. Next verse. And said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching this man. Next verse. For before those days rose up Kedios, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who were slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. Look at verse 38 and 39 of the same chapter. And now I say unto you, refrain from this man and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught next verse but if it be of god you cannot overthrow it less happily you be found even to fight against god now he is not said to have believed the gospel he just said things that were okay in order of you know just to say what is right he was neither supporting the apostles or not i mean look at verse 40 verse 40 what this gamaliel said and to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So he spoke on their behalf. So men can speak on your behalf, in your company, in your office, in an industry somewhere, in the government. Men can just speak in your favor. Men can just be steered up by God and they introduce you in a place where you've been praying and fasting for God to make an opening. Yet, it will still take a man to introduce you there. Remember Joseph when he was in prison? It was the people who interpreted their dreams in the prison who went and spoke for him before the king. You see that? God walks through men. Man, God walks through men. And when men yield and allow him to use them, then you have a miracle. Especially in the area of material needs. God will use men. And I'd like you to get ready this morning as I'm teaching. I'd like you to make up your mind and accept the fact that there are men that God is positioning right now in strategic places. There are men that God is positioning right now in relevant places. There are people that God is shifting and rearranging in your favor that will speak in your interest and that long-standing miracle you've been expecting right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare it is released in your direction receive it in the name of jesus god is working using men to bring to manifestation your long expected desire now listen carefully i believe god for miracles unusual miracles this season for every one of you and the reason is because men speak for you and men can also speak against you because that's the way it works god walks through men satan also walks through men so that's why in prayer we take authority over satan and stop him from influencing the men that god has designed to use to favor us we we can stop the devil we take authority but see we cannot stop the will of man but we can stop the devil from interfering with what belongs to us because it is within the authority of men Government is in men's hands. It's not in the hand of God. Government is in the hands of men. Resources are in men's hands. Resources are a function of what man does or what man doesn't do. Watch this. So God does appeal to men. He doesn't make men do what they don't want to do, but he will woo them and woo them and woo them. He doesn't force. That's why sometimes there are delays. What it also means is that aside from third parties having something to do, I also have things to do. There are things that God will do. There are things that I will do. See that? There are things god will do nothing about that i have to do something about like god will not compel men to do what they don't want to do and also god will not get involved in what i should do there are things i will have to do even though it's a miracle but i will have to do it in mark chapter 5 jesus raised jairus daughter from the dead and quickly he told them give her food to eat 
He didn't say, I have healed her. I will give her food. No. He healed her and then instantly, he said, just before I go now, organize food for her to eat. Because if she's going to leave, she will need to eat to leave. There are things I also need to do. In Luke chapter 5, he says, Peter, cast your net on the right side. In order to know how to cast your net, you need to have a net. That's the first thing. If you don't have a net and he says cast your net, what are you going to do? It's like you don't have skill and you're believing God for an opportunity. So three opportunities open up for you that requires a particular skill that you don't have. So now it's not God's fault that you don't have the skill. Because God on his part has played his part by creating opportunities where you should have seized the opportunities if you had the required skill. So while waiting for opportunities, develop skill. While waiting for opportunity, sharpen your skills. While believing God for opportunities, work on your skill. That is preparation for a miracle. And you know what? When opportunity meets with preparation success or a miracle is brought in. You didn't hear that? Let me repeat. When opportunity meets with preparation, opportunity plus preparation equals to a miracle or a testimony. And sometimes opportunities come, but believers are not prepared. Remember, in the last one year, what we have seen around the world is that a lot of millionaires have risen and a lot of people that used to be rich have become poor. And the reason is because certain opportunities shut down and new opportunities opened up for certain skills all over the world. So that is why you can never waste time preparing for a miracle. You do not waste time if you're preparing for a miracle a lady wants to get married and she's believing god for a brother to identify her and talk to her about marriage so what does she do she prepares herself and begins to picture what it is to be a wife to be a mother to be a wife a young man wants to get married so what does he do he starts packaging and training himself to be a husband he trains himself to be a father why because preparation is what gives birth to a miracle when it meets with an opportunity but when opportunity provides itself and you're not prepared for it then a miracle that will have been brought in is aborted because of your lack of preparation for that opportunity please stay with me this is very important because i sense in my heart things are shifting to favor you and to favor the people of god and to favor people that are part of this ministry all over the world there are a lot of things shifting for you i'm telling you i've been in prayer before the lord there are a lot of things shifting and being rearranged in your favor great and good things because of the assignment that god has ahead of us now in john chapter 6 jesus asked them to arrange the people properly so there are things that god will not do for you you will have to do it yourself a miracle does not preclude or exclude your participation i repeat a miracle does not preclude or exclude your participation man is involved in what god does man is involved in what god does jesus look at all the miracles he did when it had to do with men and resources he told them put water in the water pots you you put the water he didn't put the water for them they put the water so they had water and they had pots supposing that they have water and pots there will have been no miracle even though the miracle worker was available all right you know but because they had water and they had the pot when he said fill the pots with water they fill the pots with water then he said to them take the water and give to the governor of the feast it was the governor of the feast that tested it and knew that a miracle had, had happened so they had to have a pot and they had to have water all right now please pay attention preparation is very critical for a miracle a boy gave jesus loaves and fishes he had to give him jesus didn't just say miracle he had to get the boy's loaf he had to get fishes and with the loaf and the fishes that came from them he gave them a miracle he gave them a miracle so a miracle 
is walked. It is called the walking of miracles. There is a walking required in the production of miracles. It is walked. It is walked. They prayed for a sick man and they said to him, you stand up, take your mat and go. If he could stand up and take his mat, he would have stood up. But because now Jesus spoke the word, it is left for him to believe the word, receive the word and act on the word. He has to act on the word. Your leg cannot walk because you have a condition on the leg. After hearing a word like this and we say now, do what you couldn't do. What do you do? Without logic, you stand up and move the leg. That's the way it operates. You don't just sit and say, oh God, come and stand me up. <laughs> There's no such thing as God, come and stand me up. There's no such thing. You have to do something. A miracle requires the participation of the recipient. You didn't hear that. A miracle requires the participation of the recipient. Every time there's a miracle, the recipient did something about receiving that miracle. There's something somebody did. There was no magic. It wasn't like a show. Look at Zechariah. He had just received from the angel that his wife was going to be pregnant. And then, of course, the angel shut his mouth. But you know, Zechariah went home and did the needful. He did the needful because your wife cannot have children if you and your wife do not have sexual relationship. Now, no angel will go and meet your wife. That's where common sense gets in. Children will not come by you attending prayer meeting. Children will come by husband and wife doing the needful that is required within the confines of marriage. So there are things that you do. You have a role to play. You have a part to play. There's a lot of common sense to apply in receiving miracles from God. Whether it's a job, a career, a promotion in your place of work, you know, a wife, a husband, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you desire from God. Even if it's physical healing for your body, there are things you will have to do. And sometimes the reason why believers don't get the things they're expecting from God is because you do nothing. You just sit down, you're waiting for God to do it. It's like people who want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, who stand on the pulpit and close their mouth. And they're waiting for God to come down, take them up, open their mouth and speak through them. It, no such thing happens. Bible says they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began. Uh, that is how the supernatural operates. It's called super plus natural. Super natural. It's a combination of the divine and the human a combination of the divine and the human supernatural a miracle is when the super suspends the natural by engaging the cooperation of the natural it's called a miracle so there's something you've got to do it's not automatic you've got to do something it's not magic at all so in giving of miracles god involves men men give men receive someone says what about the ravens of elijah look at jesus's commentary about elijah the book of luke chapter 4 verse 25 luke chapter 4 verse number 25 but i tell you of a truth many widows were in israel in the days of elias when the heavens were shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land next verse but unto none of them was elias sent save unto Zarephath, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the times of Elias, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syrian. Now, if you observe, that's all Jesus said about Elijah. Jesus' commentary was not about the ravens, it was about the woman. The same with Elijah. Naaman had to obey the prophet's instruction. Naaman, go to the river, jump seven times. Goodbye. Naaman said, no, those rivers are not clean enough. And the PA to the king said, well, king, you're the one with leprosy. <laughs> the prophet doesn't have any problem. He has already told you what to do. Don't worry, we go. Nobody will know you went. And the king was obedient to the voice of the prophet. He went and jumped in the river seven times. And at the seventh time, the leprosy disappeared. So there's always a human participation in the operation of the miraculous. Miracles are not magic. Miracles is God and man working together to meet the needs of a man. Please stay with me. Why did we say all this?
so that you will know that there are times you must persist faith persists lord i receive a miracle you stay there and don't give up you stay there and persist until there's a manifestation somebody said to me i've been believing god for some time stay there and keep speaking keep speaking keep declaring keep saying what god says until there is a manifestation and of course of course you surround yourself with an atmosphere of faith create an atmosphere of miracles create an atmosphere of miracles you know don't allow anything contrary to miracles to be found around where you are surround yourself with a miracle atmosphere because faith persists when it comes to material resources men give men have to act and you must always know it's not magic remember we said god is a convincing god he will not change all men even though that is his will but the men will have to believe the gospel first and receive it even with salvation as great as salvation is as big as salvation is god's heartbeat yet people are not forced people will have to hear the gospel believe the gospel receive the gospel before they are saved that's the way god operates god doesn't just act men have to be convinced at what god does as a believer i must understand that in faith many times i have to persist and stand strong i have to persist and stand strong sometimes you are healed and few days after the symptoms are back that is where you stand strong and refuse to recognize the symptoms and only recognize the healing that is yours already in christ jesus hallelujah so god expects the believer to stand strong you know one of the biggest examples i can give you is the preaching of the gospel in mark chapter 16 verse 15 go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature god's greatest assignment on the earth yet there are people i preach to 10 times before they say yes people don't just believe the gospel all the time at once there are times people will resist you they will reject what you brought to them but you keep preaching and keep praying and keep preaching and keep believing and then eventually they are saved the same way you persist for people to get saved that is how you have to persist for your healing you have to persist for a miracle on your job you have to persist for a marital miracle you have to persist you have to stay in faith the bible speaking of abraham said he was strong in faith giving glory to god being fully persuaded that faithful is he who had promised who was able also to perform that's why when you read the epistles on material things primarily what is taught is given to others that's the control god has to tell you in his word to give to others when you read philippians chapter 4 verse 19 what does he mean my god will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus my god will meet your needs by other believers giving to you the riches in glory is in the believers every believer is a custodian of god's riches so god meets the needs of believers through believers right now in the service there's somebody that has an answer to what you're fasting for there's somebody that has an answer to what you've been praying for in fact there's somebody right now in this service that is carrying the answer to your need he doesn't need it but he doesn't know what to do with it and he's not aware that you need it why because the needs of men are met by men so god will move believers god will move believers he didn't say my god will supply magically your needs he has just taught them how they met his needs when brother paul was in want and because his riches in glory by christ jesus is in the church the believer is the custodian of god's riches in glory so god meets other believers needs by us giving that's why the epistles are full of instructions to give to give i told you of a lady that kept coming to me for prayer every time after the service she would come and stand before me on the pulpit and tell me her waist i prayed for that waist till i got tired of praying for that waist so one of the days she was standing and i was really frustrated and i didn't know how to tell her off but i was frustrated so as i was about to pray 
the Holy Ghost said to me, ask her what kind of bed does she sleep on? So I said, sister, look at me. What kind of bed do you sleep on? So she smiled and said, why? Why are you asking? I said, the Holy Ghost said I should find out from you. She said, anyway, it's true. Uh, the middle of my bed, the springs have disappeared. So when I lie down, my waist goes in there. I said, but that's where the pain is coming from. She said, yes. I said, you should have told me. I would have given you money to buy a bed. So I asked her to go quickly get the price of a bed, which she had handy. So I gave her the money. She bought her bed. And from after buying her bed, I was free from praying all the time. I didn't have to pray for her one more time. Because her miracle was in the bed. And God had to speak to me about a need in her life that was generating another need that was punishing me. So to free me and have mercy on me from being punished, to be praying prayers that are not needed, the Holy Ghost gave me an insight into her situation. And as soon as I gave her money, she bought a bed, I was free from praying those prayers. She too was free from waste pain. That's the way God works. Sometimes the things you are praying and thinking are very difficult may just be little answers that are in the hands of people around you. Please, are you listening? And that is why supernatural relationships are very critical in the body of Christ. So God meets other believers' needs by us giving. That's why the epistles are full of instructions to give. If God just does things like magic, there will be no single instruction to give. He says, you that have, give to the poor. In 1 John chapter 3, in James chapter 2, in all the epistles, is instructions to give. Give. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him walk with his hand, that which is good, that he may have to give. Why does God give us instructions to give? Because that is how God meets people's material need when they are in lack. Of course, not to lazy and indolent people. No. But those who are genuinely in need, he instructs believers by his word to give to them. If there's a community of people stingy who don't give, a lot of people will not get. That's what happened in Corinth. Those who have were dispatching to those who didn't have. You know, and they will gather in Corinth to eat. Those who have will be filled. Those who don't have will go home hungry. Then brother Paul said to them, this is not the Lord's Supper. Then he now uses the example of the Lord's Supper to tell them, if Jesus gave himself to us, his body was broken and his blood was given to us, then he says we ought to demonstrate the Lord's death. When we eat we share food with each other so that those who don't have can have. And by doing that, we are showing the lost death till he comes. And then he says, some of you eat damnation to yourself. When you eat and your brother is hungry, you are not discerning the lost body. When you eat and your brother is hungry, you are not discerning the lost body. Because of this lack of discernment, some of you are sick, some of you are weak, and some of you even die. Brother Paul was teaching about love and care among the brethren. The next thing I want us to look at is how come God is this helpless? God is this helpless because he walks through men, primarily through the church. So look at every time you refuse to help people, every time you refuse to be led to help others, Every time you do that, you are resisting God from helping people. Because God will only help people through your willingness to be used by him. God works through men. And the men will have to yield to him to use them to be a blessing. But if I'm receiving healing, I have to believe to receive. If God is going to use me to help somebody, I have to be persuaded and I have to yield to God. So never think miracles and magic are the same. God's power is working. God's power is potent. When it comes to natural things, they are in men's hands. When it comes to healing, men have to receive healing. You know, Jesus demonstrated that to us in the four gospels. So in other words... I must choose not to give up. 
I won't give up. I must stay in faith until the healing that is at work in my body manifests. When my needs need to be met, I will stay in faith. I will trust the Lord that he supplies all my needs. God is my only source. And he supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But man will have to walk in the spirit for that to happen. And I trust God that the men that God will use in my life will walk in the spirit, will yield to the spirit and obey the spirit. But in current, men were not. And because of their negligence, some were sick, some were weak, some even died. That's why in teaching prosperity, many churches maybe should be teaching generosity instead of prosperity. Because that was what the apostle taught and nobody had need in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4. Rather than teaching men to go get, go get, go get. You don't need to teach men to go get. It's natural for people to go and get jobs, get money. What we should be teaching is generosity, benevolence. Because that is how God meets the needs of his people in the earth. Now look at this other side of miracles. They are not magical. We can actually explain miracles. That guy is looking for his house rent. Suddenly. No, it's not suddenly. It's not suddenly. <laughs> God prompted someone's heart who was willing and obedient to give to him. See that? It's not suddenly. God walked on somebody's heart who made himself willing and obedient to help him. So I stay in faith. My needs are met. My bills are paid. I trust God. I thought you would say that with me. My needs are met. My bills are paid. I trust God. Amen. Someone somewhere will yield to God. And I'm telling you that bill is paid for right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Circumstances and situation are being subdued and supernaturally the needs are met in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But you must remember you have your part to play. I need to have my boat in the sea. I need to play my part. I need to develop my career. I need to develop my skills and sharpen them. I need to get all the right tools. I need to have all the right resources, attend the right conferences, develop skills. And I hear God say, as you speak to some of you, you need to give yourself into proper development in the IT world, the info technology world, the information technology world. I'm speaking to some of you. Don't play with that world. Don't play with that world. Go in there and develop skills. Develop relevant skills and then position yourself. Post COVID-19, there are going to be a lot of opportunities for infotech. All right. And those of you that are in agriculture, don't play with it. Don't play with agriculture. You need to position yourself. Develop all you need to develop. Study all you need to study. Equip yourself with all that you need to equip yourself with. You need to develop new skills. He says, ask of me and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. There are great and mighty things that are designed for your peace. And if you spend some days more in prayer and you give yourself to pray a little more in the spirit, you will have an understanding of those areas of your life where you need to strengthen, where you need to, to develop more skills, where you need to polish some more because in the spirit an opportunity has been prepared already for that area of your life and if you just yield and give yourself to diligence you will be ready by the time the opportunity comes and that will move you into another realm of being a blessing to the body of christ hallelujah thank you father thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord, thank you, lord. now it's not going to happen magically you have a part to play if god's greatest work on earth which is salvation didn't just happen boom somebody somewhere has to believe the gospel somebody somewhere has to preach the gospel and somebody somewhere has to hear the gospel and believe the gospel 
Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Mark 16, 15. Go ye. So choose not to give up. Because God's power is persuasive. So as I pray, I'm praying God's power goes out. As I give myself to prayer, God's power goes out. Persuading men. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that worketh in. So when I begin to pray, I am making power available. Now when I release God's power in prayer, having made a demand on that power, now the power of God goes forth, arranging and rearranging circumstances that will favor my expectations. And you don't stop. You stay in that prayer. You stay in faith, believing until there is a manifestation. You don't abort the process. You stay in faith. You stay in faith. You stay in faith. You make power available. Then someone somewhere will yield. And suddenly, help comes. And that need is met. Hallelujah. You are called to the ministry, stay in faith. Sometimes the people don't yield. And I keep teaching. Whether you yield or not, I keep teaching in faith until you yield. The gospel is the power of God. Romans 1.16 The gospel is the power of God. The power to convince so that people will believe. God does not control men. We can stop spirits that influence men. Because they are illegal on the earth. But you cannot stop men. Men have to be persuaded. Have to be persuaded. That's why sometimes when you preach, people accept and sometimes people reject. You don't give up. You keep going back. You keep going back. You stay in faith. When it comes to miracles, you stay in faith. When we speak God's word, you stay in faith. You act on the word. You receive the word in faith. You act on the word. You act on the word. You act on the word until it comes to pass. I've had people instantly heal with miracles and I've had people it took a bit of time and yet the manifestation came. So, it depends on your willingness to stay in faith until you get your expectation met supernaturally. I sense there are miracles in this service right now. There are people that God is tearing up their hearts and sick bodies are getting healed right now by the power of God. And in the next few seconds or so, we're going to stand up and you begin to do what you couldn't do before. We're going to have a lot of instant miracles in this service right now. A lot of instant miracles. I sense instant miracles. Growths disappearing. Tumors melting out. Yeah. And limbs getting strengthened. You know, uh, all kinds of pains disappearing. Your body restored. Ulcers getting healed supernaturally. As I'm speaking right now, ulcers are getting healed. Ulcers. Ulcers are getting healed in the name of Jesus. Migraines are getting healed right now. The hold of the enemy is broken. Stand on your feet. Everybody stand on your feet. Glory to God. Let's pray in the spirit. Tonikelina, Mamamba Rogo, Dozikelida, Barakatune, Kelida Maya, Anga Bajokolo, Dobrina, Kengle de Boro, Ratu Belia, Nakagalida, Baboboroto, Sikele Neminga. In the name of Jesus, lift your right hands to heaven. And those of you who are sick in your body right now, whether you're online, on radio, television, or you're in the service, I want you to place your hand where there's a sickness in your body. If it's your heart, or your legs, or your waist, or your head, or your eyes, or your ears, wherever the condition is and if it's the totality of your body place your two hands on your head right now i'm going to pray a miracle prayer and get ready to act in faith get ready to receive right now by faith in the name of jesus pain disease sickness oppression of the devil be loosed right now in the name of jesus loose Lose your holes, lekaro tabika katana you unclean spirit lose your holes oppression go oppression go depression go suppression go 
Agapa Tonaga, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed. So every oppression of the devil manifesting in infirmity, lose your holes and come out in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Now body be healed. Be healed. Lakota, tumor, disappear, melt out in the name of Jesus. I command ulcers be healed, migraines be healed, sugar diabetes flushed out. Agaba, shokala, nakura, takina. I command bones be strengthened, tendons, tissues, ligaments, vein, arteries be corrected in the name of Jesus. Now, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, receive a miracle, receive a miracle, receive a miracle in the name of Jesus. Agaba, your talaga. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands and begin begin to give him thanks begin to praise him for miracles begin to praise him for healing begin to praise him for correction of, of things in your body begin to praise him for restoration and begin to praise him for creative miracles new eyeballs release right now new eardrums release right now tatoluta new womb created right now in the name of Jesus receive creative miracles take it in the name of Jesus thank you father hallelujah now get ready everybody you'll begin to do exactly what you couldn't do before you couldn't bend bend you couldn't move your leg move your leg you couldn't move your body move your body one side of your head i could not hear put your finger and pull it out you can hear now if you couldn't see before grab your bible or a book close by ask them to give you a book or something begin to look as you're looking you will begin to see miracles are happening all over this house right now do what you couldn't do before quickly go go ahead you couldn't jump Jump, jump you couldn't run run you couldn't bend bend you couldn't move your neck move it do something do something right now miracles are happening all over this house again again now begin to check yourself begin to check yourself all over the building once you confirm a miracle has happened i'd like you to come on this side of the building right now quickly once you confirm dr gabriel and all the pastors house church pastors come come line up with me once you confirm a miracle has happened in your body come out to this side and if we've prayed for you and you are still feeling a little bit of hangover the thing is still doing your body you're still feeling the pain or the come to this side quickly we want to lay hands on you right now the power of god is all over this pulpit right now the power of god doctors reports are cancelled there's somebody had that was booked for an operation is cancelled that that the day that 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 condition is corrected right now supernaturally le grotto sukla na mengla na ne grado jokolo do bobo egemana and jesus heal them all keep coming keep coming quickly pastors you lay hands on the sick here and those of you that are here dr gabriel get another team to confirm all these miracles that have happened we're going to celebrate the testimonies right now if you're watching online and a testimony has happened to you send us an email dr a Damina at yahoo.com if you're listening on radio and you got a miracle you can give us a call on our number right now share with us your testimonies i sense the power of god is moving all over the world if you're watching on television shoot us a mail quickly agaba jota kalana meke kolodoboro kotonekia agaba zokia all right while the pastors are praying here and confirming the miracles i want to quickly quickly pray for those who have needs now father i pray for those in need supernaturally we declare circumstances and situations are arranged right now to favor your job to favor your career to favor your profession to favor your business in the name of jesus receive miracles in the name of jesus financial miracles material miracles miracles of job miracles of marriage receive in the name of jesus now satan get your hands off of god's property where you need a recommendation somebody is speaking for you right now checks are being signed documents are being signed those of you believing god for citizenship in different countries it your papers are approved right now receive in the name of jesus receive in the name of jesus divine connections are taking place all over the world legato legato megalia angra dosakia agado gege closed doors have just opened le kruna kaka thank you father we receive and we rejoice thank you father glory amen now listen to me today's partnership sunday <clears throat>
I want to thank all of you partners for all that you keep doing to support this vision, to support our ministry so that together we're getting the gospel to the ends of the earth. Lives are getting changed. Believers are being equipped. Disciples are being raised all over the world because you partner and support us financially all the time. I want you to know that you are reward in the kingdom of God awaits you. Today I want to pray for all partners because today is partnership. Everybody around the world on television, radio, on social media, I want to pray for all of you. In our campuses, the campus coordinators are there, you know, and all our campus partners were also praying for you right now. And those of you in this church who are partners were also praying for you. And those who want to be partners today, all you need to do is send us a mail. Partnership means you will support this ministry financially every month over the course of the next 12 months to help us do what we do around the world through the preaching of the gospel. All right, so I want to pray for all partners before we take your honor offering today. Father, I pray for partners all over the world. I decree that right now there's an anointing upon them. There's a release of God's grace upon every partner. We receive on your behalf supernaturally. Supernaturally, we receive on your behalf. We receive favors. We receive opportunities. We receive increase. We receive stability. We receive promotion. In the name of Jesus on your behalf. And we command the devil to take his hands off everything that concerns you. You are kept by the power of God. You are preserved. Your needs are met supernaturally. They are met supernaturally. They are met supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer and the blessing upon all partners of this ministry. You go from strength to strength, enlargement for your businesses, enlargement for your careers. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for partnering with us. We're expecting to receive all of your partnership commitments today, tomorrow, to enable us to do the things we are supposed to do in the next one month. But it's an honor to have all of you partnering with us. Now, I want to take your worship offerings this morning. I mean, your honor offerings all over the world in this building, everybody. We're giving in honor of God's word. We're giving in honor of this ministry and the labor of this ministry. You have your honor offerings. I'd like you to lift them up wherever you are. The banking details are on the screen for all those who want to send in your offerings through bank transfers. And those of you who want to also redeem your partnership, the banking details are scrolling on all screens right now. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush will read out the banking details for you so you're able to honor your commitment to the work of the kingdom. Lift up your offerings this morning, Father. We rejoice in faith and we thank you for the privilege of honoring your word. We thank you for the privilege of honoring Christ, the privilege of honoring the gift of God to us, even the man of God teaching us and ministering the word of grace into our hearts. And as we give, we give in honor, we give in faith. I decree that every offering is a sweet smell before you today. And thank you for the blessing upon this house. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Praise God. Guys, you know we love you. Always a joy to serve you the grace of God. I do not take it for granted. And I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. Now listen, make sure that the whole of this week, you stay with us on all the broadcasts, 12 noon and 6 p.m. every day. And there's a lot more God has in store for us. Remember, we're praying every day. We're praying every day in the various prayer you know, groups and pray, prayer platforms be a part of what god is doing in this house and we look forward to seeing you remember to be in service every evening 6 p.m and uh, we look forward to bringing more teachings to you and until we see you again in the services enjoy the grace of christ and be blessed let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning glory amen Woo! we trust that you have been blessed by this message for these all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino. Please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com. You don't know to pray. I don't care how many degrees you have in prayer. If you like a PhD prayer, until you pray, you don't know prayer. It has been designed that you can never know prayer but by praying. That's the only way. As a believer, you remain very flimsy until you give yourself to prayer. Prayer develops your capacity and ability. In prayer, you have overcome many things. What you overcome in prayer cannot overcome you in real life. You don't know prayer by reading books. You know prayer by actually praying. Abel Damino Ministries International presents Power City International Global Corporate Prayers. 
theme the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer in a 10 day of intensive prayer and fasting for the assignment of world evangelism. Date 2nd April, Easter Friday to Sunday, 11th April 2021. Time Easter Friday and every other day, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. first service and 11 a.m. second service. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibu Road, Oyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. If there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. Host, Doctors Abel and Rachel Damino. Be there. Spirit of God spoke to me that this year the alignment will get more sharper. It will get more sharper, and the difference between darkness and light will get more clearer. This year it's going to happen. False prophets and false preachers will be exposed. Charlatans will be disgraced them all because the light of God's word is going to grow, and discernment will be very sharp. Deception will increase for those that will be deceived. Those that will be deceived will be deceived to silliness. Those that have chosen the path of darkness, darkness will consume them. That is, they will be so full of darkness that they will not find their way. And those that have chosen the path of light will walk in greater illumination. There will be so much light. So there will be such clarity between darkness and light. It's not going to be like it is now where we don't know which is which because all of us look alike all of us sound alike false prophets are using jesus we too are using jesus charlatans are using tongues we too we are using tongues no 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 there will be a sharp divide kabatona the body of christ will emerge out of the rubbles out of the rubbles there shall be an emergence of the structure there will be an emergence of the shape the church of jesus will start taking shape it will start taking shape and it will become very clear to the world that this is the church of jesus i speak to you the mind of god almighty it shall no more be business as usual it shall no more be a combination of all of us no no saith god my body will rise and emerge out of the rubbles and saith god an exceeding great army is rising from among the rubbles and it shall be clear it shall be obvious and they shall know they shall know everyone will know the difference between darkness and light the days are over when those who don't know the difference call the darkness light and call the light darkness the days are over the days are over there shall be a sharp divide between the darkness and the light the word of god will grow like never before hunger for the world will grow like never before the people of god are going to go after the world after the world after the world after the world and there shall be a mighty revelation of the identity of the church the church will have a clear cut defined identity like never before deception will be exposed and deception will be disgraced and the hunger for my world will rise very strong among my people and my people will seek for pasture like never before and say of god that's why i'm preparing you i'm equipping you because people are going to look for pasture and they're going to look for you and they're going to come to you and they're going to ask you and you will become teachers you will become pastors you will become ministers of the gospel in your various places of vocation wherever you are found you will be a teacher because you'll be hunger men are going to be seeking for the knowledge of the true god in the midst of this demarcation the dividing line will be very obvious. I didn't hear powerful in it.
Jesus said, No man has ascended up to heaven in John chapter 3 verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. Verse 12. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Next verse. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So what he's saying is, number one, he said, you have never seen the shape of God, nor heard his voice at any time. Number two, he says, no man had seen God at any time. Number three, he said, no man has ascended up to heaven at any time. Those are very clear words. There's no ambiguity about those words. Then he now said, no one has seen God at any time except the Son of Man. He said, at no time did you see his shape. Remember, Moses said the same thing. You didn't hear his voice. Then he says, to be a witness. The word be a witness is the word material. Material means to speak up. Then he said, you have not seen any form. That word form there is appearance. You have never seen any appearance of God. The Greek word eidos. Eidos, it means sight. Something that you see and can describe. But where God is concerned, Jesus said to them, none of you have ever had an appearance of God or a sight of God to a point where you can describe. All right? Some people said, you know, uh, God said to Moses, you cannot see my face and live. So it is God a killer, you know, and that's because they have not understood how to rightly divide the world. Jesus defines heaven in him. Jesus defines heaven in him. Look at Luke chapter 9 verse 29. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. White and glistering. The sight was referring to the physical body. Something that we can see. Something that we can see. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says we walk by faith, not by sight. And that scripture actually is referring to the physical body. It's referring to the physical body or the glorifying of the body in contextual study. So when you study the Bible contextually, it demolishes many things. Remember, the scriptures can never mean what it never meant. The scriptures can never mean what it never meant. You have never seen him at any time. Never seen God at any time. John 1 18. Then Jesus now speaking in John chapter 14 verse 9. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. And now sayest thou then, show us the Father. Alright, so in one breath he said, No man has seen God at any time. Then in chapter 14 of John, he now said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Now, in John chapter 5, he says, You have never seen his shape, nor heard his voice. John chapter 5, verse 38. And you have not his word abiding in you. For whom he had sent, him you believe not. Next verse search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me that means the scriptures don't have life because life is in a person he is saying to you that the scripture already testify of me i don't need a human eyewitness i don't need a human account the scriptures already testify of me in other words when you follow the words of the prophet when you follow the words of the prophet and carefully you must remember when we say the words of the prophet not all the not all the words the words of the prophet concerning the sufferings of christ and the glory that will follow the words of the prophet that testifies of his suffering and the glory that will follow 
when you locate those words in the old testament within those words you will find the power of god you will find the power of god in a promise you will find the power of god in a promise look at that john chapter 5 verse 40 and you will not come to me that you might have life then much later in verse 45 jesus speaking now said do not think that i will accuse you to the father there is one that accuses you even moses in whom you trust even moses in whom you trust now take note so jesus is saying that moses brings accusation accusation means to point out someone's wrong that means whatever we find in the old testament that accuses man of wrong is not testifying of christ you didn't hear that whatever we find in the old testament that is accusing man of wrong is not testifying of christ for anything to testify of christ it will not be accusatory it will not accuse people jesus said it is not i that accuses that means my testimony in the scriptures have no accusation he said but moses whom you trust is the one that accuses you before the father so now take note of this all the woes in the old testament woe unto this woe unto that we are not a testimony of jesus because jesus said do not think that i will accuse you to the father look at that john chapter 5 again verse 45 do not think that i will accuse you to the father there is one that accuses you even moses in whom you trust 46 for had you believed moses you would have believed me for he wrote of me so moses wrote two things number one he wrote accusation number two he wrote of christ so in the message of moses there are two messages there is accusation and there is christ in the writings of moses so just like that all the prophets in the old testament in their books had two messages all the prophets isaiah jeremiah ezekiel obadiah amos all of them nahum habakkuk zachariah zapaniah joel all of the prophets of the old testament had two messages in their writings number one accusation and number two they testified of christ and in their testimony of christ it was a promise so jesus now reveals to us the father jesus is the revelation of the father in humanity Okay, thank you for staying tuned. We just move straight to the announcement that the radio audience will be waiting for bank details. The free banks, as always, there's FCMB, there's Zenith, and there's UBA. Of course, the account name remains the same. One account name in three places. The account name is Power City International. There's FCMB 2982-68. 2028. That's for FCMB, account name Power City International. The second account and uh, the second bank is Zenith 10 12 36 59 12. 10 12 36 59 12. That's for Zenith. The account name is Power City International, but of course. And then finally, UBA 100 39 26 465 139. 26, 4, 6, 5. Quickly, quickly. Finally, for sponsorship, just call up. Plus 234 You email Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. Day is uh, GR, of course. I'm done with those um, opening announcements just in time to go join the man of the moment, the man without whom we cannot run this uh, part of the show. I mean the entire show. It's just centered around one man. I was going to say, so the show is uh, Damina centric, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, no, bye is still on set. Um, my name is Michael Bush. I'm super excited to be here. But 
Global Baba is also here, international televangelist, a prolific author, and someone who just teaches the word the way you've never heard before. Help me welcome Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush, good evening. Global Baba, so nice to see you. What a blessing. So, so nice to see you. Praise God. How's been your day? Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. I'm on radio. I had to go sign on the program, come here. And okay, then, okay. The usual. <laughs> the magic. The usual. The usual. <laughs> so nice to see you, Global Baba. Thank you. Um, uh, we'll just pray. We'll just say the stage As usual. the ritualistic prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we rejoice that your word is flooding the nations. Hearts of men are open to the truth of the gospel. Minds of men are being rewired by the Holy Ghost through the teaching of your word. And we thank you that even where there was resistance, the resistance is collapsing. Because you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. The word of God covers the earth as the water covers the sea. So we ask that laborers are released to the nations of the earth to teach and preach and disciple men. All over the world, we declare that there's an exodus of men from darkness to light. And we decree that even in our state, our nation and other nations of the earth, our governments continue to, to be used as instruments of creating an enabling environment for the gospel to thrive. And we thank you, Lord, that your word finds free cause, even and it is glorified around the world as it is glorified with us. We give you praise and glory, and we pray specifically for ministers of the gospel that are in countries where there is heavy persecution, where there is strong opposition from the government down against the gospel. We pray that they have boldness, that they continue to preach with boldness. We pray for strength for such ministers and for such believers. And we decree that even in the midst of persecution, the gospel thrives most. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, Global Baba, we set to go. We spend the night in uh, Uyo, Akwaibum State. So we're going to be starting here from on this edition of the program. So I got this anonymous entry. It says, God bless you, sir. Please, I would like to know how I can see the manifestation of Jesus' finished work in my life, like, you know, in the areas of healing, spiritual growth, provision, etc. I thought that when I claimed the promises of God for my life, I would not be attacked by sickness and diseases, yet these challenges still come. So how do I live? How do I enjoy the manifestations of Jesus' finished work? Thank you, sir, for your quick response. God bless you. Amen. Well, first of all, you must set your focus right. If your focus is seeing Jesus as a means to an end, you're already wrong. Because Jesus is not a means to an end. Jesus is the end. Once you find Christ, you find true satisfaction. You find true fulfillment. Nothing can be beyond Christ. Nothing can be better than Christ. Christ is the ultimate. And that's very important. You must be able to receive the gospel in a way that Christ becomes your ultimate satisfaction. Jesus said, if all our hope is in this world, we are of all men most miserable. So there is something better than money, cars, and houses, and it is Christ himself. He said to that woman, if you drink of the well, you will thirst again. But the water that I give you, you never thirst. Jesus is the gift of God that satisfies. However, after receiving Christ, I'm contented with having Christ. As you begin to grow in the knowledge of Christ and feed on Christ and grow in the knowledge of Christ, all of the realities of God on your inside begins to find expression. Things like your authority, things like the fruit of the Spirit, things like all that Christ has provided. Now, however, remember, your body is still mortality. So the fact that your body gets sick doesn't mean you don't have the promises of God. It just shows you that this body is mortal. And that is why this body shall be swallowed up by immortality. So while we are still in this body, we have up and downs. That's why Brother Paul said, in this body we groan, not desiring to be naked, but that mortality should be swallowed by immortality. So there's a groaning in this body because of the limitations that this body poses. However, as you grow in the knowledge of Christ, you're able to exercise authority and keep your body in the best possible way. But don't forget, it's not just reliant on your authority. There are also common sense things you do to keep this body. Remember, this body came from the dust. Therefore, it must survive by the things that come from the earth, like good food, rest well, sleep well. All of that are part of the things that helps you to live a healthy life. Okay, Global Baba, another anonymous. No, it's not anonymous. It's just anonymous in the fact that they didn't tell us where 
he's writing from, but I mean, it could be jolly well be with you. So his name is Mega, or his or name is Mega. It says, hello, Global Baba. Thank you so much for your labor of love and for teaching us the true gospel. Please pray and counsel me over my brother, Salom. He drinks excessively, Global Baba, and he's drunk almost every day. He even went to rehab for the same problem, but he only stopped drinking for a while and he started again. I'd also preached to him the gospel and had given him teachings to listen to several times, but he refuses the teachings and would only be interested for a while, and he's back at it again. He also went to a point of him accepting Christ, but his condition remains the same. He drinks to a point, global baba, he doesn't know where he is. Not only does he drink excessively, but he also smokes and is in debt because of his drinking condition. This started when he was 17 years old, and now, global baba, he's 31. Things don't seem to improve. Please. What can we do? Thank you, Mega. Well, as it is with all addictions, not just alcohol, all addictions, smoking, porn, and you know, you know all, all addictions, it's all because of you know, lack of identity, lack of an understanding of who you are. And it boils down to identity crisis. The moment you don't know who you are, you become a victim. You become um, a, a slave. You are bound. Suddenly, you cannot enjoy the freedom that is yours in Christ. So what do you do with your brother who is given to alcohol? Well, the first thing is you've got to expose him to the message of Christ. Let him begin to feed on Christ. Christ is the true satisfaction. What the guy is looking for is satisfaction. He thinks alcohol can give him. Some other people think, you know, uh, womanizing can give them. Some other people think, you know, uh, smoking will give them that satisfaction. So the more they drink, the more they want to drink, the more they drink, they have a false sense of satisfaction. And then suddenly it wears off and they go back again. So it becomes an addiction and it becomes a circle of bondage. However, when somebody begins to feed on Christ, begins to grow in the knowledge of Christ, gets baptized with the Holy Ghost, begins to speak in tongues, and begin to enjoy what Christ has provided, suddenly his need for natural things to give him that satisfaction begins to disappear. That is how to break addictions. And we have a number of people who have reached out to us who say just by listening to the things that I teach, they are free from different kinds of addictions. So your brother can be totally liberated if you expose him to these teachings and just begin to pray for him for his eyes to be open. Not just your brother, all others who are having addiction problems. That is how to free yourself from such addictions. Okay, Global Baba, we make um, progress. I'm still staying in New York, of course. Hello, Global Baba. Dr. Abel Damina, your sermons are so lifting. Glory to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Savior. Please, do you have a Bible school? Is it open to all irrespective of Christian denomination? Attend Cherubim and Seraphim Church. God bless you, son. Be assured. Stay fast, immovable, always in abounding in the work of the Lord, for your labor in the Lord is not in vain. First Corinthians 15, 58. Furthermore, I just want to say that um, the intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush is doing a great job on air. Uh, thank you. Your son, Jesus Christ, Nsikak. Wow, Nsika, what a blessing to have you reach out to us. Well, we have a Bible school. That Bible school comes up every July. There's a whole month of Bible school. And it's open to everybody. Cherubim, Seraphim, you know, um, uh, Celestial Church of Christ, open to Pentecostals, Orthodox, I mean, open to Muslims, open to Buddhists, open to uh, any homosexuals, lesbians. The Bible school is open to everybody. You know, it's for everybody to be trained to know Christ. So look forward to July, and we'll be looking forward to welcoming you to our Bible school. Global Baba. The Intercontinental. My prayer is that when I grow <laughs> older, I should not look for trouble the way Global Baba does. <laughs> oh, Global Baba. <laughs> okay, greetings, Global Baba and Mr. Michael Bush. Please, sir, in Matthew 26, 39, all the way to 42. How did Matthew get it at account when he was not among the three disciples with Christ and the three were sleeping when Christ went further to pray? Could it be by revelation? Thank you, sir. Well, again, remember all of these accounts, the people that were around the apostles and disciples had these stories from them. And based on what they heard, they communicated to those who documented. Okay, I'm just trying to see whether I can now leave a quiet boom. Okay, let's, let's go to worry. What is in Delta State? Yemi writes, Dear Global Baba, I thank God for the insight into the Word of God. If the disciples were not born again before Christ rose, what then happened in Matthew 10, 1, where Jesus sent them to preach the gospel? Were they not saved then? 
Well, remember, he gave them power to go and clean and cast out unclean spirits. He gave them power, delegated authority. He delegated to them his authority. And they went in his authority. That's why they say the demons were subject to us through your name. So they were operating by delegated authority. Okay, Global Baba from uh, Delta State. Let's just go to next door, Edo, Bidin City now. Please, I have some personal issues, which I've tried my best to resolve, but they have persisted over the years, and I need your counsel on how to overcome them. One, I'm a born-again Christian. I love and serve God, but have been experiencing stagnation, failure, and delay in many areas of my life. I've fasted and prayed, but yet I'm still I'm suffering. Two, I do have bad dreams most times, Global Baba. I see myself in the village. I left for over 20 years now. And in most cases, I see myself living in the same old house, the same dreams my elder sister is having, and as such, we are battling poverty despite all efforts we make. Three, I've gained admission to study in the university for four years, and after six years, I haven't graduated. It's been from one carryover to another, despite reading hard for the exams, and finally four, and many more challenges I've been experiencing. So, counselor, how do I overcome all these? Please, I need your counsel as soon as possible. Godwin from Benin City, Edo State, Global Baba. We just go to our first call, our first door. Hello. Yeah, hello. Many thanks for joining us. Your name, yeah. where you're calling from? Yeah, good evening. I'm calling from Delta State. Your name? My name is Essay. I want to ask a question on forgiveness of sin before and after the law. Okay. On one of your Christmas said, treat me. Okay. You said we have obtained internal forgiveness. Yes. That was what that was the like that was what you said at the end of the administration. Yes. So sir, my question is, even if a man or a believer sinned with or without confession, is granted is he granted forgiveness? Yes, of course. Now you must remember that the forgiveness of sin is not predicated on you confessing anything. The reason why Jesus died is because of your sins. He died for the sins. So automatically by his death, your sins are taken care of. So in Christ Jesus, if a believer be overtaken, if a brother be overtaken, or a believer gets into sin, the Bible's recommendation is that those that are spiritual should restore him. So there is a restoration. But of course that restoration is not confessing <laughs> sins. That restoration is that Elders in Christ, who you look up to, are able to take you, keep you down, show you who you are in Christ, show you what the scripture says about you, so that you, your, your identity is made very real to you. The moment you come face to face with your identity, that appetite for that misbehavior suddenly disappears because now you know who you really are. And that's how believers are taken care of where sinful acts are concerned. Remember, Jesus already died for you. And the Bible says, as you stay in the light of his word, the blood of Jesus is always cleaning you from every sin. It is an automatic work that you receive from the advocacy of Jesus, guaranteeing you totally cleansed. The reason why you're thinking of confessing sin is because you're thinking of stealing, fornication, adultery. But there are other sins that you commit in the course of the day that you're not even aware of. And if you must confess sin to be forgiven, then there, that means that there are a lot of sins in your life that are not forgiven. Then that means you will never make it to heaven. So the point is this. Jesus' death took care of all our sins, both known and unknown. So whenever you find yourself do wrong, all you need to do is receive what Christ has done, rise up in strength and tell yourself you are bigger than what you just did. And when you say that, the consciousness of who you are destroys the appetite for further continuity in that act. So what we have in Christ is eternal forgiveness. Okay, from Edo to Rivers. Hello, Global Baba. My name is Prince Kalu. I'm in Portacot. Did we answer that Edo you read? Yes, I, the oh, phone I read it was uh, yeah, before full. the okay. phone call. Okay, yes. Global Baba, thank you. What, That's was, why. It? what was it? Okay, it's, um, it's a whole lot. It's just talking about stagnation in its life. Oh, yes, oh, yes, so, oh, yes. All right, now, first of all, you must realize that even if you are not a Christian, you will have still been having that stagnation. So you're not having that stagnation because you're a Christian or because you're not a Christian. It is because of your exposure. You must have a mindset where they have already taught you. They've given you a consciousness that tells you as long as you keep having those dreams, you will keep experiencing backwardness. And as a man thinketh, so is he. So what do you need to be free? 
You need to expose yourself to sound teaching. Sound teaching. You see, the teaching of God's word is a cure to 99.9999 problems of Christians. Expose yourself to sound teaching. The word of God is for reproof and it is for correction. It will reprove you, it will correct you, and it will instruct you in righteousness. That's what the teaching of God's word do. It will change your mindset. And when your thinking changes, your life experiences will be affected. So you need to change your mind by exposing yourself to the sound teaching of God's word. Just as we now expose the next caller on okay. air. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Bush. Many thanks for joining us. Ma'am, you know where you're calling from? I'm Ivan Good evening, Global Baba. Good evening. Bless you. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Um, we gave us instructions to study the God's word. And yesterday, while studying the book of Matthew, the chapter 4, the record is that the devil took him, that I quote, he was talking about the different of Jesus. So I want to find out the devil that was working in that chapter, who is he? And then I already know that devil cannot carry Jesus. So what does he mean by it? And the devil took him. Okay. And then last half of the chapter. So how can Jesus and then um, Satan be in the same place at the same time? And then again, what does he mean? What does Jesus mean in Matthew 12, 31 to 32? And again, can you explain the working down time in Matthew 22? And when again, Jesus was talking about he went and, and he, he invited guests and they did not come, so he had to go out and invite people very quickly to and every man. And then a man came, he was not addressed people, but you are not properly dressed. What was that kind of me in, in class reality? Okay, I know that you're going to have all those questions. In fact, today, we were reading, I think, some portion in the book of Mark or something with the family. And those issues also came up and we discussed on them. Remember the parables of Jesus were not literal. So every time Jesus gave a parable, the mission of the parable was to reveal him to Israel. So let me start with the parables before I go to the temptation. Every parable Jesus gave, whether it was the people that were invited and refused to come and they went to the highways. He was talking about the Jewish people whom he came for. And they rejected him and he opened the door to the Gentiles. All right. All the, all the parables were concerning the fact that Jesus was among them and they were looking for Jesus to come. He was using parables to reveal to them that he was the one among them. Even the one that the person came without a, a, a wedding a cloth. He came to attend the marriage supper. He was just telling the people that, you know, there's a wedding going on and some of you are attending the wedding that you have been preparing for without wearing the wedding gown, meaning you are rejecting me who is supposed to clothe you and qualify you for the Messiah that you are waiting for. All of those were parables to reveal Christ. Now, the temptation of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 was actually, theologians tell us, it was a summary of all the temptations that Jesus had in life. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life. It was just the way Matthew reported it. The reportage of Matthew was why it made it sound like that. Jesus and Satan didn't travel to a mountain. All of those were temptations in the mind of Jesus. Thoughts that Satan kept throwing into Jesus' mind that Jesus resisted and refused to succumb to. Remember, he was tempted in all points, yet without sin. So that's a summary of the temptations that Jesus was exposed to as a man. He was tempted in the pride of life, the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, summarized by Matthew in Matthew chapter 4, as the devil taking Jesus to a high mountain. It's a style of writing. I hope that helps you. I especially, yes, I especially liked Evangel, that idea of and again and again and again. I, I thought, I, I didn't know how we were going to end with that one, but this next <laughs> caller. Hello. Okay. Hello? Yes, many thanks for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? Hello, my name is uh, Luke in the I'm calling from Ondo State. Uh, uh, please, actually, I have a question. It's based on uh, baptism. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 8, talking about the, the encounter Philip had with the token Enoch. Um, after the conversation, Philip baptized him with water. And after which he received the Holy Ghost. So, but I followed that is uh, 
teaching, and I discovered that he said, uh, hold, uh, water baptism is not necessary. So why should she now baptize him with water, and at the same time, he received the Holy Ghost at the same time? So that's the question. Then I'm not in it. I read some people talking about uh, some pastors, maybe preaching about generational forces. Like, um, maybe whereby the second son is taking over or overtaking the first son in some families. That way you can see sometimes it appears to be true. So, but I don't know. I want you to throw more light on this. Thank you, sir. All right. If you've been following the teaching, that's why I keep teaching and I say pay attention. Pay attention. Because if you've been paying attention, you will have heard a few days ago, I said the book of Acts is not a doctrinal material. And that's what we've been proving as we keep teaching. It was a journalistic account of what, how the New Testament church evolved, how it grew. So in chapter 8, they were still growing. But if you follow closely, after chapter 8, you won't see any other water baptism. Because shortly after chapter 8, Paul the Apostle came into the church and brought sound teaching. And when Brother Paul came into the church, nobody was baptizing anymore. So all of those were, were part of their growth period. And in their growth, they had what we call cross-testamental application. They carried over practices from the Old Testament. But as they grew in Christ, they dropped those practices. Remember, the prophecy is John said, I baptize with water, but the mightier than I will not use water. He will use Holy Ghost. The day of John is gone. This is the day of Jesus. Jesus does not use water. He uses Holy Ghost. So when you receive Jesus, you are baptized into Christ. You are baptized with the Holy Ghost. And once you receive the Holy Ghost by salvation, you don't need water anymore because you're already saved. It's one baptism, and that baptism is receiving Christ. Okay, fantastic. I... Hello, Global Baba. My name is Prince Kalu. I'm in Potak. Please pray for me. Everything about me just turned bad. My wife left me with kids and ran away. Please, Daddy, I need words of prayers for God's mercy on my life. I think the same answer we gave to, yeah. to I don't know, what was that? there was that a phone call about listening more. Yeah. Listen to the word more. Yeah. Yeah. You could find your help Yes, there. just pay more attention to the teaching of God's word. It will really help you a lot. You know, but, but it doesn't stop us from praying for you. Receive peace. Receive clarity, and in the name of Jesus, we declare an intervention in your situation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To Abuja, we fly, that's flying from River State, we fly straight into Abuja. God bless you, uh, uh, Global Baba, and Mr. Michael Bush. Kindly explain, First Corinthians 3.17. If any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? PMO in Abuja. What it simply means is if you get yourself into defilement, God is absent from that defilement. And because God is absent, if you expose yourself to defilement, you have a lot of things, you have consequences to confront. That's what he was talking about, Brother Paul. When he was talking about preserving your body, and he was talking about, you know, knowing that you, you carry Christ. So you don't carelessly live a life where you create a room for the devil to torment you physically. From the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja, Nigeria, flying straight to Spain. Hello, Global Baba. Please, I really need your help. Please, I don't know what to do about um, this. I do have sex in my dream. Whenever I sleep, before I knew it, I would get wet all over, with, uh, all over my body with sperm. My name is Kelechi Augustin Duro. I'm based in Spain. I'm still single. Please, Pastor. Help me out of this one. Kelechi, there are two reasons why you have wet dreams. The first one is biological. All right. Every, every boy, every guy that grew from boyhood to, to, to youth to manhood or to being a man had wet dreams one time or the other. It's, it's biological. If you ask doctors, they will affirm that. That is part of the proof that your entire reproductive system is functional. In fact, it's just like erection. Boys have erections without any reason. Is part of establishing that your reproductive system is alive. So, and that is why mothers or fathers who observe that their boys don't have erection, they start complaining because it's not healthy and it's not normal. It's part of growth and development. However, when it becomes too much and you start having sexual dreams, it could also refer to the fact that maybe you are spending more time in things that are illicit. Movies, porn, you're spending time discussing with people that talk about 
filthy things, dirty things, you know, erotic things, you know, sexual things. And if you're exposed to such things, there's no, there's no magic. You're going to have those kind of dreams. So what do you do? Begin to renew your mind with the word of God. Spend more time hearing the word. Spend more time in the word of God. And keep reminding yourself that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And as you begin to feed on the word of God, he said, where with that shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking the heed thereunto according to God's word. He says the word of God is water that washes you. So as you spend more time in the word, it begins to clean you of things that could be responsible in your mind for those wet dreams. But once your mind is clean and you have once in a while wet dreams, it's part of your biology. If you ask doctors, they will confirm that. Okay, from Paris um, in France, we'll be going straight to another European stop. That is Spain. First though, we just have someone finished business back in the live studio. Hello, your name? Good evening, Papa. Evening. Um, Bless you. Papa, my name. Okay. Papa, um, this is the time to, I want to cease to thank you for the word that you've been helping to build us up. And one of the best things that has ever happened in my life is the interpretation of the scripture that you've made us to understand. So, let's, going straight to the point, just yesterday I was passing through the street and I saw one of these billboards and they were quoting this verse of the scripture, um, this Joel 2.25 that says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust, the canker worm, we know the scripture. So, the very first thing, um, the first thing that came into my mind was like, what is this scripture saying? Because they have been talking about the scriptures for years, so I had to go and read the entire scripture, as you've taught us to read um, verses of the scripture in context, the pretext, the post-text. So I actually went and did that. When I read, at the end of it, I came into terms that what this place was actually referring to was God restoring his people, which was through Christ. That's the concept of salvation. So, Papa, I would like to know, why is it that, is it that people have, the preachers of the gospel, that they have intentionally been knowing this and they don't want to make this known to the people or they don't know at all? Now, there are two other two questions that I want to ask. So a friend of mine was talking about, um, you know, working in the supernatural without knowledge. That knowledge has nothing to do with the supernatural. So is that possible? And he equally said something today too. He said that when, if Jesus was um, talking, um, saying gibberish things, when he said that, when he mentioned the aspect of um, um, harvesters being little. So now I want to ask you, sir, this aspect of calling regarding today's Christocentric meal, how do you attest to this fact? How do you explain for them to get better that as New Testament believers that we are all called, that we don't need to hear a voice from God before we go into the ministry? Thank you, sir. All right, very good. The first question you asked has to do with pastors. Are pastors not aware of this? Well, let me be honest with you. A lot of pastors don't even know the Bible at all that they preach because many of them they didn't get any form of training. They were just full of zeal full of excitement, and people told them, you have a call. In my day, I don't know about today, once somebody is very zealous, he's always going for evangelism, always coming for prayer meeting, if they see that he's very committed, you will hear people start telling him, you have a call, you have a call. And then after the person thinks he has a call, he takes the Bible. And as he takes the Bible, he just starts saying things that sound good. Or he copies what other people are doing, and that's his own ministry. So many pastors really don't know. They don't know what you know. Many didn't have any training. And then others who are training, they, 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 some of them are not paying attention to the rules of Bible teaching and Bible preaching. They just preach what people want to hear so they can gather crowd. They preach what will make people feel good so that they can gather crowd. That's where the dilemma is. So that is why as we keep preaching the truth, it will become glaring the difference between the truth and falsehood. And people will be forced to preach the truth of the gospel. And those who are ignorant in ministry, when they start hearing the truth, you will find out that they become humble and they begin to learn so that they too can be efficient in ministry. Then on the area of calling, every child of God is called. Romans chapter 8 says, for those he foreknew, he predestinated. Those he predestinated, he called. Those he called, he justified. So every born again believer is called. However, God brings us into the church and gives us pastors who feed us with knowledge. And when you are fed with knowledge, you grow. When you grow spiritually, the fruit of spiritual growth is ministry. You now want to preach. You now want to be a blessing to people. So the message that saves you makes a messenger out of you. And then Jesus never spoke in tongues. Because when Jesus was on earth, 
the spirit was not yet given. So he never spoke in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a gift that came from Jesus after his resurrection. That's why the first speaking in tongues was on the day of Pentecost. And from that day till today, the apostles, all of them spoke in tongues. And every believer ought to speak in tongues. Jesus said, this sign shall follow all those that believe. They speak in tongues. And speaking in tongues is, 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 is not a language of men. Now, your friend that told you that the supernatural is not taught, he himself doesn't know what he's talking about. Brother Paul in 1 Corinthians 12 says, Now concerning spirituals, I will not have you ignorant. That means there is a teaching that is required in order for you to operate in the supernatural. Global Oba, thank you. Um, I know that the second live uh, audience question is ready. First, draw. I just need to go complete this trip to Paris in France. I'm still from Paris. I really am blessed by your teachings, Global Baba. I'm so thankful to God for making me come in contact with your teachings. Since I began to follow you, my Christian life and ministry have changed totally. I really honor you and appreciate the great work that you do for the body of Christ, Global Baba. Also, after a counsel from you, I began my ministry here in Paris, starting with a weekly Bible meeting on Zoom. Now it is growing. We have taken a venue and we have our service every Sunday. I would like to have a prayer and a blessing from Global Baba because I was being trained for ministry in a church for some five years where the real gospel was not preached. But since I came in contact with the teachings, everything just changed for me. Now I know that here in Paris, we'll take over this country and all Europe with the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So Global Baba, can I have a word of prayer and counsel or instruction for, the, for this new mission we are beginning Finally, one of my goals for this year is that one year from now, we will have grown well and we will invite you for a massive conference here in Paris. Thank you. Pastor Steve Griffith is in Paris, France. Wow, Pastor Steve, congratulations. I will also encourage you to join our mentoring academy. That will give you an opportunity to interact with me one-on-one -on -one every week. And it will help you as you grow. Where you have issues, you can always reach out to me. If you join the mentoring academy. However, Father, I pray for Pastor Steve that he has utterance, he has boldness, he is kept by your power, and his ministry continues to find expression, and the word of the Lord grows mightily in the whole of Pari. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Live audience, question number two, and the last on this edition. Hello. Hello. Good evening, church. Good evening, Mr. Bush. Good evening, Pastor. Bless you. Welcome. Global Baba, I want to say thank you for what God is using you to do. Truly, I'm blessed with your teaching. I just want to move straight to the question. What's your name? Okay. Sorry. My name is Udeben Brownson. Okay, go ahead. I just want to move straight to the question. It's about this tradition something. It's about a family inheritance, as in when the parents died, now in sharing of the property as in the will, it happens that, uh, like in my place, I said before you take part as in to inherit what your father left for, you have to like, you know, they, you have to meet a certain demand. Like they will call, come and give goods, come and give this, come and give that. After you like, you cooked, you know, prepare something for them. And after they say, should each of the male children should come and be giving money, you know, give good, give this and give that. So I want to, I want to ask if truly is, is right for a believer for, inside my spirit, I know that it's not right for a believer to get into such thing because I see it as economic waste. So I just want uh, Kluba Baba to say something about it. Thank you, sir. When they ask Jesus that kind of question, they ask Jesus, is it okay to pay tax? And Jesus told them, get me a coin. And he asked them, whose inscription is on that coin? They say Caesar's. And he said to them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God. If that is a culture in your place and a tradition in your place, since it does not affect your, your faith in Christ, it does not affect your Christianity, you know, give it to them. But if it is too much for you, negotiate with them, talk with them, and see how you can reduce the, the economic waste as much as possible. But you know, they will always insist you have to give them something. So give them and, and save yourself from a lot of trouble and just enjoy the peace of God. From the Francophone headquarters, that's the headquarters of Francophone in the world, and that's located in Paris in France, uh, that's in Europe. I'm coming to 
what should be the headquarters of Francophone in Africa, Cameroon. Yeah. Hello, Global Baba. This is Skylep from uh, Cameroon. Doctors, uh, warm greetings in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. My questions are taken from First Peter 4, 6, 17, Second Peter 2, 20, and Second Thessalonians 2, 3. Who are the spirits that were being preached to? And is it the gospel message that was preached to them? What did Peter mean by judgment must begin in the house of God? And that the righteous shall be scarcely saved. And also in Peter's second epistle, 2020, who was he referring to? If these were sinners, is it possible for a sinner to have a pyknosis? Considering that was the word he used there for knowledge. Well, I'll answer just two questions. The other ones, you didn't give me the references. The first question I will answer for you there is, who are the spirits that were preached to? Well, it's a type of... It's a, it's a, Peter was making reference to the days of Noah. And the spirits that were preached to were the people in the days of Noah. They rejected the gospel. And that's why they are in prison. That's what Peter was making reference to. And then I think the second question was... Um, um, was that the one judgment Peter will begin from the, the house church, of yes. God. Well, it's persecution. He means that persecution will begin with Christians. If persecution begins with us, what shall be the fate of those who do not even have Christ? So he was talking about persecution for the gospel. That's what Peter was communicating in that scripture. Okay, Global Baba is a fine place to live. Cameroon is a beautiful place to spend. Yeah, the it night. is. I know you will like Cameroon. <laughs> so we'll stay over in Cameroon. Tomorrow is another day. We come and we continue in style. Until then, okay, Global Baba, we need to say a quick prayer to, you know, for those who need yes, sure. All right, Father, we pray for all those that are in need, that are connected to this broadcast right now. People that are sick, those in need of a life partner those that are in need of fruit of the womb. We pray for people that are depressed, those that are going through challenges in their minds and in their circumstances who need a miracle. Wherever you are right now, we command the devil to take his hands off your circumstances, off your body, and your body be healed Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We declare that you receive marital favors. Amen. And we pray for those that are married, a miracle of the fruit of the womb, Amen. receive it Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for students who are believing God for admission, those believing God for scholarship, receive favor and supernatural favor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we believe you for massive harvest of answers. Receive it now. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And okay, amen. so Global Baba, any moment now, we are on um, Inspiration FM. Yes. That runs yes. from 9 yes. until 10. 9 to 10. Then Inspiration Heritage. FM. Heritage, yeah. 10 to 12. Tomorrow, tomorrow. morning, 5.45 a.m. XLFM. 11 to 12, I'm mean 11 to 1, Radio Aquaibom, 1 to 3, XLFM, 3 to 5, Uni UFM, and we're back here tomorrow evening on Comfort FM. This is Michael Bush on their behalf, thanking you for your time and looking forward to another edition tomorrow. Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush, what a day. It's been a wonderful one today. Well, we thank all of you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God, both the social media community and everybody on radio and on TV. We look forward to having all of you again tomorrow. Make sure you bring more people to be connected to this grace. And until then, enjoy the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen and amen.